Hello friends, it is me, JJ, noted YouTuber, artist, author, Canadian, and flag spurt. And today we are going to be spurting some more flags at you as part of my ongoing series entitled Flag Mysteries. This is where I solve the mystery of some mysterious looking flag. It is not exactly rocket science. So let me start off with a trivia question. What part of Canada is legally on U.S. soil? The answer is Canadian International Airports. You see, because we Canadians travel to the U.S. so often, at some point the U.S. and Canada signed some sort of treaty allowing Canadians to legally enter the U.S. while still inside of a Canadian airport. This has made travel to the U.S. a lot more efficient for Canadians because it means that we now go through American customs at the point of departure in Canada rather than at the point of arrival in the U.S., which is what people from other countries generally have to do. Many Canadians take this system completely for granted, but I must say that I developed a renewed appreciation for it when I was forced to make a stopover in Florida on my trip back from Chile. I had to wait in this gigantic, horrible customs queue at the Miami airport. No thanks. Anyway, on my most recent trip to the U.S., as I was passing through the American entrance gate at the Vancouver International Airport, I noticed a bunch of distinct American flags beside the big welcome to the USA sign. I didn't recognize any of them, but I made a little doodle of one that I thought looked particularly unique. A bunch of thick red vertical stripes with a little blue eagle in the corner. And when I got home, I googled around a bit to figure out what flag it could be. Since managing the customs checkpoints at airports is a matter of national security, I thought maybe it was the flag of the National Security Agency. But no, their flag is is just another example of what American flag spurts sometimes call the SOB model, which is to say a seal on a bed sheet. But then I went a little bit more literal and just googled for border security flag. Aha! I was then led to this interesting website, embassyflag.com, which specializes in selling unique American flags to government clients. And they have this whole section on homeland security flags, and I think that this was the same suite of flags that I saw at the Vancouver airport. So in addition to the NSA flag, and what I now know to be the Customs and Border Protection flag, there's also the US Border Control flag, the flag of US Immigration and Customs Enforcement, better known as ICE, and this jaunty number, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Air and Marine Operations Center flag, which has a design that is as elegant as its name. In short, flag mystery solved. So I've been enjoying the fact that you guys have been sending me mysterious flags that you encounter in your own life, like this flag, which was submitted to me by my friend Kaleem, who says he saw it in a Club Monaco in downtown Toronto. For those who don't know, Club Monaco is a sort of upscale yuppie type clothing store. And based on what I know about yuppies, I accordingly assumed that this surely must be some sort of nautical flag. Nautical themed stuff having a great deal of appeal to the Bobo set. I could also discern from the large St. George's cross and the style of the crown that this flag was probably British in origin, meaning the big letters RN probably stood for Royal Navy. But what about LI? Lifeboat Institution, says acronymfinder.com, and it is actually Royal National, not Royal Navy. According to the official Royal National Lifeboat Institution website, this flag has been the symbol of saving lives at sea for over a century and adorns the side of every lifeboat in Britain and flies at every lifeboat station. In other words, the RNLI flag, or just as commonly this stylized rendition of it, has become a thing that is pretty synonymous with search and rescue boats in the UK, almost as iconic as painting them orange. We don't really have a similar symbol for emergency rescue boats on this continent, do we? Maybe like those orange lifesavers or something? I mean, we did name a whole candy after them. Anyway, flag mystery solved. And speaking of nautical flags, here is a photograph of a ship flying a very weird flag that was submitted to me by my friend Hannah from Florida. The flag is obviously hard to make 
out, but it looks like a kind of Union Jack type thing made of a cross of two distinct colors with a little white spot in the middle. Hannah tried some Googling of her own and thought it might be this flag, which isn't a bad guess, but you can see that the colors are not quite as dark and it is missing the white spot in the middle. But just for fun, let's try to solve the mystery of this flag too. Hannah was actually clever enough to look up where the ship was registered, but this didn't wind up being that useful as the ship was registered in Liberia. A lot of ships from all over the world are registered in Liberia as part of some sort of tax scam type thing. But she did figure out that it was a cargo ship, which I knew meant that it was probably flying a corporate flag instead of a national one. A corporate flag flown by a shipping company is known as a house flag. And luckily there exists a website called House Flags of the World that lets you search for a flag based on its design elements rather than just what the company's name is. And by searching for cross, I was quickly able to solve the mystery. Hannah's first guess was the flag of the Port Line Shipping Company. It used to be one of Great Britain's major shipping firms. It doesn't exist anymore, however, and I feel this particular picture was probably cropped out of some old-timey guide to house flags of the world. The actual flag from the ship is this one, which is the house flag from the Leonhardt und Bloomberg Shipping Company of Germany. It was a company founded way back in 1903, so the colors they used in their logo would have at that time been considered patriotic German colors, given that the German flag used to look like this. Flag mystery solved. All right, now check out this flag extravaganza. This was an art installation I saw at the University of Chicago a few weeks ago. It was called something like Revolutions and it featured 12 little flowers, each colored in the colors of a flag associated with a protest or revolutionary movement. Most of them were pretty recognizable to a flag spurt like myself, but a few of them did stump me. So let's go through them one at a time. The first one is the old communist flag of Romania, but with the crest cut out of the middle. During the late 1980s uprisings against the communist governments in Eastern Europe, it was common for protesters to cut the communist crest out of their flag as a symbol of defiance. I know that this was a popular thing to do in Hungary as well. Google even used a defaced Hungarian flag as their doodle for Hungarian National Day. This black and red number is the flag of the Sandinistas, who were a Marxist revolutionary group in Nicaragua during the 1980s. They are actually still running the country to this day. I've actually heard it said that it is common in Nicaragua to see the Sandinista flag flying alongside the national flag. This solid red flag is, I assume, just a flag that is supposed to represent the sort of generic flag of communist revolution or left-wing revolution more broadly. This goes all the way back to some of the revolutions in France. Next, we have the flag of Polish Solidarity, which was another movement associated with uprisings against Eastern European communists in the 1980s. Solidarity was originally the name of a banned Polish labor union, but it eventually became synonymous with the broader cause of uprising against the communist government there. I remember once reading an interview with the guy who designed the Solidarity flag, and he said that the symbolism was supposed to be that the letters were all leaning on each other for support in the same way that the Polish people were leaning on each other for support during that difficult time. Now, this one was the first flag that I did not recognize. But after a bit of Googling, I'm fairly sure that it is supposed to be one of the precursors to the US flag that was used during the American Revolution. This one specifically, which is sometimes called the Sons of Liberty flag. It actually looks a little bit like the border security flag. I didn't know what this one was either, so I tried to focus on the colors. According to this nifty Flags of the World handbook that one of my friends sent me the other day, there are only three countries in the world that have a blue, red, and green flag, Namibia, Azerbaijan, and Gambia. This one most closely resembles the flag of Azerbaijan, but their recent history doesn't really include any revolutions of note. Ditto for the Gambia, sorry, Gambia. I know it is considered offensive and condescending to call countries the whatever these days. Even here in Canada, we're not supposed to say the Yukon anymore. Anyway, after searching around a bit, I eventually found this graphic on this article in the Southern Times, the newspaper for Southern Africa. It is an obituary for this guy, Peter Elonga, who was apparently one of the leading freedom fighters of Namibia. So Namibia was a former German colony that was later annexed to South Africa. And during the apartheid times, the Namibian independence movement became quite a popular cause. Mr. Ilonga's group was known as the Southwest African People's Organization, 
or SWAPO, and guess what their flag was? In 1990, Namibia became independent, and the SWAPO party has been in charge ever since. Oftentimes, when a country becomes independent, the new national flag ends up closely resembling the flag of the ruling party. This seems to have been the case here. I shan't be showing the next flag, because it depicts a certain something that is still prohibited in many parts of this world, and I don't want to get demonetized, but it is the flag of the Yippies. Here is my safe for work version. The Yippies were an American youth movement in the 1960s, involved in protesting the Vietnam War and things of that sort. They were the most famously eccentric of all of the major counterculture groups, perhaps best known for attempting to perform an exorcism on the Pentagon building in 1967. In the name of Zeus, in the name of Anubis, god of the dead, in the name of seaborn Aphrodite. And this next one is, I believe, the flag of the slave revolt that established the nation of Haiti in 1804. The Haitians have changed their flag multiple times over the years, but I must say I kind of miss the simpler earlier designs compared to what they have now. This is the flag of the National Liberation Front, better known as the Viet Cong. They were the main communist insurgent group in South Vietnam during the Vietnam War. According to the website worldstatesman.org, which generally does a pretty good job of telling you which flag was used by which place when, this was also briefly the flag of South Vietnam itself, between 1975 and 1976. This was during the short period of time between when the South was captured by the Viet Cong, but before it was formally absorbed into the communist regime in the North. All right, now this flag was another challenge. It has a Portuguese style rooster on it, but I couldn't find any evidence that it was used in Portugal's famous Carnation Revolution of the 1970s. However, according to my book on symbols, the rooster is also a common symbol among some tribal cultures in Africa. So then I'm thinking, aha, is there any country that involves both Africa and Portugal? Answer, Angola. And yes, it turns out that this was the flag of one of the Angolan Marxist groups that revolted against Portuguese colonial rule in the 1970s. It was known as the this. I like this description of the symbolism of the flag from flagsoftheworld.info, which gives you an indication of what Angolan politics was like in those days. The top red stripe stands for the revolution against Portugal, the bottom one for the second liberation struggle against the Cubans who were backing the ruling MPLA militarily. The next one looks to be just an extreme zoom in of the current flag of the People's Republic of China, which of course was originally founded by a communist revolution seven decades ago. And lastly, we have the pirate flag because who doesn't like pirates? 12 distinct flag mysteries solved. All right, and now let us look at another fan submitted flag. This one, which comes to me from my friend Ewan from Johannesburg, South Africa. They told me they've been seeing this one around a fair bit lately, but have no idea what it is. In this picture, you can see it looks like someone's got a whole bunch of them in their backyard or something. So this is a pretty wild and unique looking flag. Everything about it is like very few flags that I've ever seen. It has a large green chunk followed by a smaller light blue chunk followed by a chunk with a zebra stripe pattern on it. These segments are in fairly unusual proportions for a flag. And I mean, a flag with a zebra stripe pattern on it? That's pretty wild too. Now, I'm sad to say friends, but this flag has bested your boy JJ. I spent hours trying to get to the bottom of this one, looking up all sorts of flags for all sorts of things in both Johannesburg and South Africa. Political parties, sports teams, religious and ethnic groups. My only semi lead was that maybe it had something to do with South African rugby because South African rugby flags sometimes are designed according to a similar sort of ratio. Or maybe it had something to do with the Zulu people since I know that they sometimes use the zebra pattern as one of their traditional symbols. Just from context clues, however, I feel pretty confident saying that this is probably the flag of some sort of non-government thing. Just because people do not usually fly multiple flags unless they are really passionate about something, and I think that most people are not really passionate about things relating to like their city or state. So flag mystery, alas, unsolved. But I'm sure some of you will immediately recognize this flag the second I post this video and promptly write exactly what it is in the comments. And for that, I salute you. Got any mysterious flags you wanna see me solve in a future video? Send them over. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next week.